Lots of living things, big and small, actively alter the natural environment to better suit their needs. But two mammals really stand out in this regard. Humans and North America's largest rodent, the beaver. The Department of Environmental Conservation estimates that there are between 50,000 and 75,000 beavers living in the Adirondacks, and signs of beaver activity are common. Not surprisingly, the interests of humans and the interests of beavers sometimes come into conflict. This was certainly the case in the summer of 2023, when a beaver dam played a significant role in a natural disaster where I live. An extreme rain event in the mountains southeast of Long Lake led to the failure of a beaver dam that had stood for over 30 years. That dam was holding back a lot of water, and its catastrophic failure contributed to a torrent that destroyed a section of New York State Highway 28N and left part of the community without road access to the outside world. That was an extreme negative case, but on the whole, the environmental alterations that beavers make are positive. Their waterway engineering moderates both floods and droughts, and they create and maintain openings in the forest that increase species diversity. Many of the ponds, bogs, and slow-moving streams that characterize the Adirondacks were created or altered by beaver engineering. Which makes me wonder what the landscape looked like in 1900, when there were virtually no beavers in the Adirondacks. Beavers had been regionally extinct since the 1830s, victims of the relentless pursuit of their fur for hatmakers back in Europe. So, by 1900, after 70 years with no beavers present, the Adirondack environment looked very different. Beaver ponds and meadows were filled with trees and brush, groundwater levels were lower, stream channels narrower, and the total amount of water stored in the landscape, especially at times of drought, was significantly reduced. Although it is not usually included in the list of factors that led to the large-scale fires that burned here in the first decade of the 20th century, it seems self-evident that less water, more dried-out vegetation, and fewer swampy wet areas would have had an effect. The question is, how large was that effect? I'm often surprised when I learn about the seemingly unimportant details that when taken together, have made the world we live in today. For example, in 1903, the New York State Legislature allocated funds, $500, to pay for the reintroduction of beavers in the Adirondacks. The legislature's motivations are unclear, but that money paid for the release of a few dozen beavers trapped in Canada and Yellowstone National Park. This was a spectacularly successful program. And by 1920, the beaver population had grown to the point that complaints were rolling in to the New York State Forest Commission. Beavers were charged with the destruction of timber, the alteration of shorelines, and even the starvation of white-tailed deer in the winter. In response, the Forest Commission directed forest rangers and game protectors to count the beavers and determine how much timber had been destroyed. They soon learned that counting beavers is not easy, and estimates ranged from 5,000 to as many as 20,000. Given that there were at most 100 beavers in the entire region in 1905, a population of 20,000 just 15 years later was implausible, as were some of the estimates of the damages done. To gain a better understanding, A more formal study was undertaken by Dr. Charles Fox, director of the Roosevelt Wildlife Research Station. During the summer of 1921, Fox traveled the region, conducting a beaver census and talking with local people. His initial report was released in 1922, and following a second summer of fieldwork in 1924, the full report was published in 1927. 
Dr. Fox found that the beaver population was indeed growing rapidly, but that most of the damage claims were exaggerated or simply made up. As Fox puts it, If one would look at all closely into questions of this sort, one must be prepared to encounter a certain amount of prejudice or self-interest. Fox estimated the beaver population in 1924 at 6,000 to 8,000 animals. This represented a remarkable rate of population growth, but far less than the 20,000 claimed by some. Even so, Fox agreed that trapping should be allowed to constrain the rapid population expansion. One-month seasons were opened in 1923 and 24, and a regular trapping season for beaver was initiated starting in 1928. In those days, beaver pelts were a valuable commodity, and trappers slowed the population growth. In 1970, a top-quality beaver pelt was worth $25. In 2023, a top-quality skin is worth, well, $25. The problem, of course, is that $25 doesn't buy nearly as much today as it did 50 years ago. Many of the beavers trapped today are taken under special permits that allow for the removal of problem beavers, those that are causing direct damages to human property. The primary beaver predator these days is an animal that was not even present in New York State prior to the 1930s, the coyote. Recent studies of coyotes in the Adirondacks have found that beavers are a primary food source. In the next video, I will return to the question of how many beavers are present in the Adirondacks today and to the role that beavers play in reducing the risk of large fires. It might be impossible to determine the effect that the absence of beavers had on the fires of the early 1900s, but fires still burn in areas where beavers are absent, but where they were historically common. Wildlife managers in the West and northern forest states such as Wisconsin have acknowledged the role that beavers play in reducing the fire risk, but this has received little attention here in the Adirondacks. That role, and the value we should associate with it, make this a question worthy of further investigation.